Well, good morning, Pine Grove. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, as I always say when I get a chance to speak. Uh, I don't know if you're going to learn anything this morning, but I certainly did, <laughs> preparing this message. So at least one person got something out of this message. Um, we're starting a brand new series, and the series is going to be on faith, hope, and love. And it may seem like this is a bit of a brand new thing. But in real time and in reality, I think it's really a continuation of the last two series that we've had, where we had uh, Knowing the Holy Spirit and Pine Grove 101 and 102. And it's really the Pine Grove handbook to following Jesus. And so if you learned a little bit about church structure in the last two sermons and you learned a lot about the Holy Spirit over the last seven series, uh, uh, sermons before that, what we're going to move into now is some of the basic chemistry, the basic DNA, the basic composition of who we are as Christians. And so this series is going to be very quick. So if you miss one, go online and pick it up. And for all of you uh, online now, thank you for joining us. And the next two are going to be on hope and love. Now, I had a hard time getting my head around what I could possibly say about faith. So will you join me in prayer right now and really ask that the Holy Spirit comes down and gives me the words, gives you the understanding. Heavenly Father, may your Holy Spirit come on this place where two or three are gathered together. We know that you're here. And may we be able to understand what it means to be a people of faith. We ask this through your son Jesus. Amen. So I just wondered if any of you have ever been stranded in the middle of a lake. Uh, either because you don't know where you're going or you don't know where you've been, or you don't know how you got there. This is all a question of faith, or perhaps a bit of bad preparation, I can't say. But I think that the whole notion of faith is a God-given element in our being, so we know where to stand, where to move, and what we are going to see. Now, I said that the series is going to be about the big three, faith, hope, and love. And so I started thinking about this, and I, I sort of thought, yeah, they're kind of interconnected. How are they interconnected? And I started pulling them apart, and it, it's sort of like um, when you get those um, pieces of paper that you stick together at school, and you put them together, and then you try to pull them apart. They don't pull apart very easy. And so there might be some interrelationship. In fact, I know there's interrelationship between the notion of faith and the notion of hope and the notion of love because in the Bible we see that they're often interrelated. So we took, I took a look at this a little bit. If you take a look at the, uh, the Bible, you see that faith is mentioned 278 times, hope 151 times, and love trumps them all being mentioned and commanded 551 times. So what? Well, let's take a couple of looks at where they're talked about together. Perhaps the most famous, if you haven't heard this, you've been living under a rock, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not, you've heard this before. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So if you've been to a wedding in the last 50 years or 40 years or 40 minutes, um, you will have heard this is a very, very common, common uh, passage read at weddings. Now if these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Okay, I don't want to steal anybody's thunder for who's giving the message on love, but it does look like love's kind of got a bit of the upper hand here. Let's take a look at the next one. 
We give thanks to God always for you, for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election for God. Okay, what's Paul saying in this passage? He's saying that, you know what? You guys are part of God's election. You are part of God's people. You are now God's children. And guess what? You need a little bit of faith. You need a little bit of hope. And you need a lot of love. So there's some kind of interconnection there. Wow, that hasn't been really helpful yet, has it? So maybe, maybe we can look at some of the kind of everyday feelings around faith, hope, and love. And, and what does it mean? Well, I'm hoping for something. I'm hoping to get good news about fill in the blank. Winning the lottery, a big trip, going to Vegas, whatever. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. It's forward looking. So hope is probably the easiest one there. Something to do about hope. Something to do about the future. Something about an expectation. Well, how about love? Love, we know it in so many different forms. It seems to permeate our secular and our sacred cultures. It's... Um, an interesting division, I'm just going to talk about love for just two seconds. The love of the world is very conditional. It's very transactional. It's very ephemeral. And yet the love of God, we know, is abundant. It's lavish. It's unconditional. It knows no scarcity. And so love covers all. Love is God incarnate. Okay, so what about faith? Well, faith's a little bit trickier. I think probably of the three concepts, faith is the most difficult to get your head around. I put up a, a couple of, of uh, meanings that from the dictionary, the Oxford English Dictionary, Trust in someone, so what is faith? Faith is trust in someone's ability or knowledge. Trust that someone or something will do what they promised. Could also mean a strong religious belief, I have a faith. Or it could be a particular ri religion, my faith is Christian. Or it could be intending to do the right thing. I'm doing this in good faith. I don't want to, but I'm doing this in good faith, doing the right thing. So let me tell you a story about faith. And this is about worldly faith. This is not about a Christian faith. This is about a situation that I lived, that I understood what faith meant. I was 12 years old. I lived in the center of the universe, as I thought, a little tiny farm about a gazillion miles from anywhere important. And I loved baseball. So I played baseball. My parents would come and watch me play baseball. And my dad said to me, I am going to take you to the baseball banquet. I thought, whoa, that's great. I had faith in my dad. My dad was going to take me to the baseball banquet. And if you know about farming, there are good times to plant seeds. And there are not so good time to plant seeds. And since your business is very much planting seeds and harvesting seeds, it's good to observe and do the planting when the planting needs to be done. So <laughs> the end of the baseball season happens to be around the 15th of June, which is kind of around the end of the time when it's good to put seeds in the ground. And so it had been wet, and my dad couldn't get in the field, and he couldn't get in the field, and he couldn't get in the field, and suddenly it was the 15th of 
keen. And I had a baseball bat. And the sun came out. What could be better than the sun coming out for a baseball banquet except that the sun coming out meant it was seeding time. And so what was my dad to do? Guess what? He took me to the baseball banquet. And <laughs> consequently, he seeded the crop on about the 25th, because that was the only day it was sunny, and it rained and rained and rained and rained, so he actually seeded the crop on the 25th of, Jan of June, and it basically never, ever produced the seeds that we needed. It went, we made it into cattle feed, but it, the whole idea was that that was faith in my dad, that he would come through on a promise. So, faith is a little bit about having a relationship. Now, sometimes you have faith in the government, and they don't do what you want them to do. And so, that relationship is tarnished. It's damaged. It may not be a real close relationship in the first place, but it doesn't get any better if they say they're going to send you a tax refund and they don't send you a tax refund. It's a trust in a promise made. So my dad made me a promise. That was probably around the 15th of May. And for him, he had lots of time to get the seating done. But in fact, that wasn't what the season did. And so he came through with the promise. And so I had trust in the promise and I had confidence in the promise maker. Now, the thing about human relationships, they don't always have a happy ending. The father doesn't always come through on the promise. The father might have said, baseball banquet, schmeschmal spanquet, and just gone and done what he thought was most important. But in faith, I had a sense that my dad would come through, high or low. Did he always come through? No. But that time, definitely, so much so, that all summer long, the neighbors could see that he didn't do the planting when it was supposed to be planted. And that was another testimony to my faith in him. So where does this lead us? If we think we can have faith in a person, faith in a situation on earth, in an earthly way, oh my goodness, what a difference when we're talking about a relationship between you and the creator of the universe. Oh, he didn't just not seed on the 15th of June. He sent his only son to die for us. Wow. Now that is confidence in someone who promises you things. And so really, faith is about truth. And true faith is about truth. And so sometimes when people let you down and you have faith in them, you say, oh, my goodness, they let me down. I had faith in them. Well, they didn't have the truth or the character that God has. Because God has the ability to make these promises and to come through on them. So I'm going to argue this morning that our relationship with God is a trust relationship, a confidence relationship that has already gone both ways. Because before we were, while we were still sinners, he sent his son to save us. So if you remember only three things from this morning, these are the words I want you to remember. Faith is about standing. Faith is about moving. And faith is about seeing in a different way. So, standing. I often wonder, oh, just a quick check-in here. Did any of you guys drive to church this morning? 
did you think about whether or not that car in the opposite lane might just decide to swerve in and crash into your car? Did you have faith that something was going to go the way it planned, you planned it? You had that as a foundation of driving. Because if you didn't, let me tell you, I would not get in a car. It's like, oh, I'm going to go buy groceries, probably get killed, but I'll do pick up some radishes. You have an intuition about a foundational belief in how something is going to work. And that's what God gives you when you have faith in God when you first believe because God is creator, creator of the universe. So let's just take a look at this passage in Hebrew. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. There's that word hope now. The conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, through Jesus, so that when what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So we have a foundation. The other thing I often ask myself, man, I don't know if any of you have had hard mornings, hard afternoons, hard days, hard weeks, hard months, but how do you get out of bed if you don't have a foundation? We have a foundation in Jesus, in God, the creator of the universe. So, I don't know if you have a house or an apartment or a car or anything that has kind of a foundation. How's your foundation? Have you ever asked, what's true? What's this all for? Why am I here? We know in the Bible, God's word, that through faith, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God so loved the world that he wanted no one to be lost, but all that believed in his son to be saved. And even if you go back to the Old Testament, there's all kinds of passages in it that says, God has good plans for me. Wow. So that's the foundation part. That's the standing part. If you want to figure out where you are, your faith in Jesus Christ will give you that foundation. It's almost like a backward looking, I'm okay. But it's actually I'm here now, I'm steady, I'm steady on my feet. But that only gets you so far, because if you want to do anything, you can't just stand where you are. You have to move, and you have to move through faith. Faith is motivation. That's where things get a little interesting. Passage from James. Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Okay. Well, we know by faith, we have a foundation Jesus is the creator. Jesus, uh, with God, is creator. We have Jesus coming to die on the cross for our salvation. So we know all that. We know that there's going to be a, a heaven, a new Jerusalem coming from heaven at the end of time. And so I can rely on that, but not only to stand fast, but to move forward. And move forward how? Well, you know, it's funny. We spend a lot of our life going to school. We spend a lot of our life going to work. We spend a lot of our life being retired. And then we die. Is that it? No. Okay. So maybe what we need to do is to move forward in a kind of a spiritual dimension, which is deepening our relationship with Jesus. Maybe it's that whole notion that we saw for seven weeks about the, the Holy Spirit. Maybe we need to exercise those gifts of the Spirit in my church right here and in my community. And maybe it's to make a difference in the world. Wow. So by faith, 
we are motivated to do what our God-given character and spiritual gifts allow us to do. Ooh, but wait. What about those challenges? What about those disappointments? What about faith in those circumstances? Have you ever heard someone say, I lost faith in the government? I lost faith in my parents. I lost faith in the institution. I lost faith. I lost faith in big grocery. Um, you pick it. Um, or maybe you're like, oh, yeah, Don, that's really easy for you to say. You've got food on your table. You can pay your mortgage, all that kind of stuff. But what about me? What about the idea that I'm having a really hard time? And so much so that I think I'm losing my faith. What does that mean? That's a, that's a crisis, that I'm losing my faith. And I bet you wouldn't have to go very far around the room here for you to say, I know somebody who lost their faith. Or sometimes I just don't know about these things. Am I losing my faith? And that's a real honest question. And the answer there is life is difficult. There was a very famous book written in 1978 by a Christian psychologist. His name was Scott Keck, and he wrote a book called The Road Less Traveled. And his opening line in the book was, life is difficult. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us when we are having a difficult time, when we have a friend who's having a crisis of faith, what can we do? Well, there is no magic pill. There is no um, ability simply to say it's going to be okay, except if you have faith. Because that whole notion of trials and tribulations, God, and I often and marvel at this, when we become a Christian, we are saved, and we know our future, but it doesn't mean we're got not going to have any more trials. And so basically, I think that faith as a motivation is the movement towards God, which will provide you with the energy, with the ability, with the knowledge to fight everything else that's going on in your life, in your world. And when it's too big for you, it's always going to be too big for you. Go to God. Go to those people that are in your circle, your Christian friends. And you're going to need their help to ride out the wave of the testing of your faith. Wow. Wow. Um, does that mean everybody's going to be feeling great tomorrow afternoon? No. Does it mean that there is a possibility that your faith will make you strong? Yes. So we're going to take a look at just a couple little homework exercises as to how that might work. But wait, before that, there's the third part. There is moving, sorry, there is stand foundation, there is moving by faith, there is seeing by faith. And I love this uh, graphic. I don't know if you can see it. Did you know there are parties in heaven? Um, because we have an assurance that God is a partier. He loves celebration. And so basically, um, this is, these are sort of some of the, the final words of Paul to Timothy. And, and uh, Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He has kept the trust in the promises and the confidence in God. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So that's the forward-looking. So if we have the backward-looking of the foundation, and we have the motivation to move through faith, this is our forward-looking into the future, faith as anticipation. 
God has made many promises to you. He said, if you believe in my son, then you're safe. And Jesus said, if you ask for things in my name, I will give them to you. And Jesus has said, I go to make, prepare a room for you. He's got a place for you for the future. God likes to celebrate, and I take this on the authority, not just for the first miracle happening at a wedding when he turns fine water into fine wine, but also on each of his three celebrate, or his uh, parables, when Jesus tells the parables about finding lost things, after the sheep is found, after the coin is found, after the son, the prodigal son comes back home, there's a big party. And just taking a look at the city of the New Jerusalem in Revelation, I think we're going to have a very, very nice venue for the party. So, how about you? Got faith? Where are you at? And it, it's, this is a humbling message for me because at any given time, I could be hot, cold, or lukewarm on my faith. And so I'm going to say that you might be in one of those positions, and if you are, that's okay. It's totally good. I mean, one of the most famous saints uh, talked of the dark night of the soul. And as you get very close to Christ, as you get closer and closer to your experience with God, the devil finds you much, much more attractive as a target. So you're never safe. So you might be cold because of past hurt, Somebody let you down. Some human let you down. You might, some church let you down. You might be in present pain. It might be physical. It might be mental. It might be emotional. It might be spiritual. You might think God doesn't care. And that's an easy lie to believe because it's everywhere. Don't believe that religion stuff. It's just a, it's just a, it's for kids. And yet you sort of think, really? How do you get up in the morning? Now, you might be lukewarm, and there's some reference to, to lukewarm Christianity in Revelation. One of the churches that uh, God really despises is a lukewarm church. It's like, yeah, we believe that stuff, but, you know, we got money, we got talent, we got brains, uh, or maybe we got self-medication. And so we don't really need to get into a faith dimension, a faith perspective. Or maybe you're hot. All right. You're feeling God. We had a, a men's breakfast yesterday morning, and the speaker was talking about his heart feeling like it was blowed up like a basketball and was going to burst out of his chest because he was so on fire for Christ. I'm like, wow, I haven't had that feeling quite that way. But it explains how hot he was for Christ. And he has had, like, quite a, a journey in his faith perspective. And that kind of feeling for, for God, it's, um, it's, it's not going to be 100% of the time, but maybe that's where you're at. You're eager to see what's going to happen next. You're he eager to see what kind, of, what kind of projects God has laid on you, your heart. And so I'm going to conclude with these steps. Whether you're hot, cold, or lukewarm, if you can do these this week, give it a try. See if this helps. Standing. When you're standing, simply means, are you on solid ground? Read Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is by faith, by faith, by faith. And the writer of Hebrews basically goes through and says, this is what Abraham did, or this is what Moses did. And then basically coming to the conclusion is, so what can you do? Because going down and drilling down into God's word is going to give you a sense of what faith means in a God who keeps his promises. Move out. Step out in faith. Rely on God. Do something that's just a little bit on the edge of faith, your faith. Is it maybe talking to that person, giving that phone call that you've been not meaning to, to give? Is it phoning someone up and say, you know, I forgive you. Or is it taking somebody out for coffee that you really have not wanted to take out for coffee for some time? Do something that moves you by faith into that space. 
And then finally, this is the one that I think is really kind of easy to do but hard to do at the same time. Every day, remind yourself of your future as a child of God. And so then I'm going to leave you with a song that sort of encapsulates a lot of this and in a very lyrical way talks about all of God's promises and they're all for you. <laughs>